All right, guys, in this video, our goal is to be able to look at data that's given in a graph form, a table form, or equation form, and be able to determine if that would represent a linear function, a quadratic function, or an exponential function. So by the end of this lesson, you're going to see either a table, an equation, or a graph, and you're going to tell me if it's linear, quadratic, or exponential. All right, I want you to pause the video, and I'd like you to please see if you can identify which graphs are going to be similar. Um, so sort them according to some characteristics that you see similarities. All right, a linear function is a straight line. You should be familiar with that. It's either rising or falling. A quadratic is going to be that U-shaped. We've talked about this in the very first module when we talked about parent graphs, but a quadratic is what we call a parabola, which is that U-shaped, and it either opens up, so it's a positive, or it opens down. Um, and then exponential is going to be a curved line, and it's approaching infinity horizontally and approaching infinity vertically. So it's either increasing, getting bigger as we move left to right, or decreasing, um, getting smaller. So we've got our linear, this would be a positive linear, negative linear. I have a positive quadratic or a negative negative quadratic. And then I have exponential growth or I have exponential decay. All right, so let's go back to our graph and see um, how you did sorting them. So B, G, and I are all linear. Um, B is going to be a negative linear because it's going down. G is a positive linear, and I is actually um, just a horizontal line, but it is still linear. And then hopefully you are able to see that H, D, and F are all quadratic. F is a positive quadratic because it's opening up. H is a negative, and so is D. And then we have our exponentials, which are E, C, and A. A is an exponential growth because it's getting bigger. C is decay, and E is growth. All right, so now I'd like you to look at these nine equations and see if you can sort them according to some common characteristics. And what are you using? So how would you describe the equations that are in the, the categories that you put them in? All right, so quadratic, I'm sorry, linear is y equals mx plus b. We're used to it. Um, I'd like you to note that x is being raised to either the first power or it could be a zero power. And we'll talk more about that later. But x, it's in that form y equals mx plus b. Quadratic is when I have an x squared term, so x is being raised to the second power, and exponential is y equals a times b to the x, and x is in the exponent. So we talked about this at the very beginning of the semester. Exponential is where the x is in the exponent. All right, hopefully you were able to identify that 1, 3, and 5 are my linear functions. Um, x is being raised to the first power. Um, this would be like 0, x to the first power, which is just 0. That's that horizontal line. Um, here's my quadratic because it has that x squared. This is quadratic. It has that x squared. And this is quadratic because of the x squared. And then that leaves my exponent is the x. Those are my exponential functions. All right, go ahead and look at these tables and see if you can sort them to according to a common characteristic. So think about linear, what we know about a linear table. Think about quadratic and exponential and what they look like on a graph and what that might mean when we look at the tables. So go ahead and see if you can sort them. All right, so we know that linear has a constant rate of change. That's why it's a straight line. It's going up and over the same amount every time. So that gives it that linear um, pattern. Quadratic, the double difference is constant. And we'll talk about how to actually analyze to prove. But I want you to think about what a quadratic looks like. So it goes down and then it goes up. And when I'm talking about down and up, 
the Y values are going to go down, they're going to reach a bottom point or the vertex, and then the Y values are going to start to go up again. So I want to be looking for that. Now, if it opens, if it's a negative quadratic, the Y values would be going up till it hits the vertex, and then the Y values will start going down. And then exponential, we're looking for a ratio. So we're going to be doing a fraction of Y values is constant. So um, what I'm multiplying or dividing by is going to be the same every time. And so if you think about what an exponential looks like, is it's getting growing really fast. So the Y values are going to keep increasing. Now the Y values can keep increasing with linear, but this one they're going to increase not at a constant rate. They're going to be growing faster and faster each time. So here's just some questions that I go through when I'm analyzing a table and I'm trying to determine. So first I start with, is the rate of change constant? If it's yes, then it's linear. If it's no, then I'm going to say, is the double difference constant? If it's yes, it's quadratic. If it's no, then I'm going to make sure that the ratio of y values is constant, and that will be an exponential table. All right, so let's go back to the table, and let's use those questions. So I'm going to look at this first one, the circle. And I'm going to see if it has, the first thing I'm going to ask is, um, is the rate of change constant? So when I look at the rate of change, I'm looking at, okay, all of these are going up by one. And so this is going down one, down one, down one, down one. So this is going to be a linear function because it has a constant rate of negative one over one. All right, so let's go ahead and let's look at the square. So I notice that the numbers are getting bigger, but I can clearly tell they're not getting bigger by the same amount because to go from negative 35 to negative 21, I would add 14, and then here I'm adding 10, and here I'm adding 6, and here I'm adding 2. So I can tell that it's not linear. So is the double difference constant? And I notice that it's going up. Um, a quadratic is usually going to go up and then come down or come up and then go down. But we're going to keep going. So the double difference. So we said here that this would be adding 14. This is adding 10. This is adding 6. And this is adding 2. So that's the single difference. So the double difference is we're now going to find the difference between those. So 14 to 10 is down 4. 10 to 6 is down 4. 6 to 2 is down 4. So the double difference is constant, and that makes this quadratic. So usually on a table I said the quadratic will go up and then come down or go down and then come up. But what I'm seeing here is I'm only seeing one half of the quadratic. So eventually it's going to go down and then start coming back up. All right, let's look at the triangle. So one thing jumped out at me really quickly. I noticed it's 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. I noticed that that is getting smaller by a half each time. So that's usually going to indicate that it is an exponential. But we're going to make sure. So it's clearly not a constant rate of change. Because 16 to 8 would be down 8, then down 4, then down 2, then down 1. So then is the double, different con double difference constant. So when I look at eight to six, 16 to 8, I go down 8. I go down 4. I go down 2. And I go down 1. So my double difference, this is 4. This is 2 and this is 1. So the double difference is not constant. So now I'm going to look for the ratio of y values. So I'm going to take this number over this number. So 8 over 16, which is a half. And then I'm going to take this number over this number. So 4 over 8, which is a half. And some of you may have noticed, like we said, every time it's getting smaller. So it's being halved. So 2 over 4 is a half, and 1 over 2 is a half. 
So the rate, um, I'm the ratio of y values is constant. So this is exponential. All right, what I'd like you to do is I want you to finish the remaining six tables, and we will talk about them tomorrow in your CSG. Go ahead and make sure that you have work or math or thinking to support what you categorize them as. All right, that's our lesson. It's pretty short and sweet. So this is where you're going to have an interaction in your notes. What questions do you have? Um, what are the things that you need to remember? What are your be sure to statements? What did you learn? What's the new learning? Um, but have a really meaningful interaction so that you can remember how to do this.